Otis Redding originally wrote the song Respect, talking about how he would come home from work and give his wife his money and she still wouldn't respect him. And so it has a completely different tone when you hear the Otis Redding original song than it does Aretha Franklin's song. I think there's kind of an irony here that Aretha evidently had the right to demand it, but Otis didn't. Greeting cards. That's a big business, isn't it? Annually, billions of dollars. Did you know that most of the cards purchased in the greeting card business are purchased by women? Did you know that most of the people who receive a greeting card are women? So what is the number one theme of greeting cards? Love. Love, 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 love. If you go into a Hallmark card store, you're going to see tons of cards with the word love on them. Now, I want to challenge you ladies, or maybe if you just want to do this on your own. Go to the Hallmark card over there on gear. Walk in and say, I would like a card that expresses how much I respect my husband. <laughs> how many cards do you think you'll walk out with? Somebody said zero. Now, they will have cards like this. I, I love that you're my husband. It's all the little ways you get me that, that make me love being married to you and the way you let me be myself and can instantly put me in a good mood and the way you hold my hand or hug me just when I need it, the way you laugh with me like you do. That, there's no, that's a great card. That's a fantastic card. My point is, though... If you go into a, any Hallmark card or go online to order a card or make your own card with some kind of software or something, and you, I want a, I want a card that, that says how much I respect my husband. Exactly. In this series on the family, talking about marriage as of, uh, as of late, do you remember what a, a woman's greatest need from last week? Her greatest need is security. Uh, makes sense because since the dawn of time, women have uh, had the primary responsibility of raising the children and managing uh, the food and the clothing at home. Uh, in fact, it's still that way almost everywhere in the world. If you travel outside of the Western world, you will see this to be absolutely the, still the case when you go to uh, what we would call third world nations. And so... Um, God has placed in women a big need for security. Security for her kids, security for her stuff. And that's why, out of all the things that a wife needs from her husband, she needs her husband to love her, to cherish her, and to ensure that she's safe. Anybody ever heard of Dave Ramsey? Dave Ramsey has a series called Financial Peace University. Anybody been through that? How many of you are still doing it? Well, there's only three hands that went up in the first place, so. <laughs> anyway, Dave Ramsey, he has a fantastic series. And, uh, but in part of that series, he talks about, he says, wives have something that husbands don't have. They have a gigantic security gland. Meaning that they get really anxious about finances when guys could care less. Guys can, guys can say, hey, if we do this, we can go without. I can eat macaroni and cheese for two months if we can just make his windfall. And wives get terrified over such statements like that. You know, and so he says, if you love your wife, gentlemen, then build an emergency fund that can cover your expenses for three months. He's really adamant about that. And if you've ever heard Dave Ramsey, he doesn't make a lot of suggestions. He says, do it. Pay down your debt. Build an emergency fund. And part of the reason for that, he says, because your wives need to know that if something bad happens, at least three months of bills will get paid. And guys are like going, hey, I got this. And the wife goes, no, we got nothing. And, 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 the, and, and the guy will say, hey, don't worry about it. And the wife will say, that's all I worry about. How many fights in a marriage are over money? Oh, how many? Oh, my word, yes. How many divorces have been because of a battle over money? 
And the thing is, the guys are adventurers. They're out there to conquer. They're out there going without and eating hardly anything and, and hunting and fighting and just getting by. And they're fine with that, it seems. But, man, the moment you start talking like that, and like, oh, honey, we don't need that. It's okay. Who do you think has more debt? Credit card debt. Men or women? Men, by far, have greater amounts of debt. Women don't want to be in a lot of debt compared to guys. And so it causes a lot of tension. So, you know... Our, our wives need to be secure. They want to be secure that we love them with all of our heart, that we are devoted only to them, that we cherish them, adore them. We're captivated by their beauty. We are, we are completely dedicated to them. And that they are our priority, even to the sense of finances. Do you remember what I uh, suggested a couple weeks ago that a, a, a husband's greatest need is? Significance. Men think it's very important that they be very important. Amen? So it makes complete sense that God would tell wives in Ephesians 5... He says, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Verse 24, Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. But listen to this summation of all of this in verse 33 of Ephesians 5. However, let each one of you love his wife of himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Because a man's greatest need is to be respected. It, respect is his deepest value. 400 men were surveyed in a national survey. They were given two negative experiences. Chosen to pick one. Pick one of the two. If you had these two negative things to deal with, which one would you choose? Number one, to be left alone and unloved in the world. Number two, to feel inadequate and disrespected by everyone. <laughs> Three to one, the guys picked what? To be unloved and alone. Three to one, 76% said, I'd rather be alone and unloved than to be disrespected. Men need to be respected more than they need to be loved. Now, they know they need love, and they want it. But out of the two, one does have a greater importance. It's like food and water. You know, you can go without food a lot longer than you can go without water. And food is like love to a guy, and water is like respect. And respect is the key to motivating a husband. God designed men to provide. To provide for his wife, to provide for their children. In the core of his character, designed by God, the great architect built into guys, that he is compelled, that he's going to love his family enough and take care of them. And part of this is subduing the nature. Part of this is working the creation that God created for them. It's part of his ethic. And God designed men to also not only provide for his family, but also to protect his family. Another core characteristic that he feels responsible to ensure his family's security and safety. And a husband will take on any threat to make sure that that happens. Even at his own expense. Sisters, if you want your husband to be willing to sacrifice for you, to fight for you, to die for you, then make sure that you understand that he needs to be honored. Imagine the frustration of a man who would literally give up his life to protect his wife 
because he loves her and yet hears her continually complain to him that he doesn't love her enough. Men despise contempt. That's why husbands absolutely hate conflict at home. Because a guy interprets conflict as disrespect. And, and wives can't understand why their husband would react like this because when a woman talks to another woman, they want to work things out so that the relationship is restored. They want to work things out because they want it to be better. When a woman goes up to her friend and says, we need to talk, the other friend says, when? <laughs> When a woman comes up, when a wife comes up to a husband and says, we need to talk, the guy goes, oh, no. <laughs> Here's the, one of the most terrifying entrances to a, a sentence. We need to have a conversation. Oh, Listen, the guy, you know, here's what the guy's thinking. This isn't going to be a conversation. The conversation is two-way. This is going to not be a conversation. This is going to end up being a lecture. This is going to end up me not conversing at all, but me listening. We need to have a talk. And so when, when two women who are really good friends and someone says or implies or did something or heard about something or whatever, you know, they're like, hey, we need to get together and talk about this. And the other one's like going, let's, yeah, let's do that. Why? Because they want the relationship to be strong. And they know that talking it out is the way to resolve conflict. So they welcome that. Let's talk it out. That's great. I love you. You love me. We love each other again. Everything's good. Great. We talked it out. It's fine. But men, when they're approached like that, don't react like a woman because they're not a woman. They're a man who, who needs respect and honor. And the, it's the way that this is done. Amen, guys? It's the, yes, go ahead. It's okay. <laughs> It's the way. It ma everything matters about the way with us. Okay? During one of those tense exchanges, a wife's negative criticism can overwhelm her husband. Just, I mean, he just starts getting completely overwhelmed by it. His blood pressure starts to escalate. His pulse rate starts to kick up. And he feels it. It starts welling up. That anger starts welling up. I want you to go to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 6. I'll show you what I'm talking about. 2 Samuel chapter 6. David is the king, and they, you know, got Jerusalem ready, and now they're going to bring the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. Finally, it's a tremendously huge historic event. It is fantastic. It is a wonderful day, and David is really feeling celebratory. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever read First, uh, 2 Samuel 6, but watch this. Okay, we're going to start at verse 16. Watch this. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, is it Michael or Michael or... Oh, we'll just say Michael. Michael is a woman's name, the daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. She despised him for it in her heart. So she's a princess. She's been raised in a king's castle for her whole life. She's married to now the king of Israel. And he's out there dancing around because the Ark of the Covenant showed up. And she hates him for it. Well, what's that all about? Well, let's move down to verse uh, 20. And David returned to bless his household. Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How the king of Israel honored himself today, uncovering himself today before the eyes of his servants, female servants, as one of the vulgar fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. That's sarcasm, isn't it? Oh, you've done a great job of honoring the king today, stripping down to your loincloth and dancing around the streets, just like all these other guys out here who are losers doing. 
And verse 21, And David said to Michael, uh, It was before the Lord who chose me above your father and above all his house. Boom! Dig! Insert! Twist! Okay. And I will celebrate before the Lord. I will make myself yet more contemptible than this. Didn't that sound like a husband? You want contempt? You think I'm lazy? <laughs> I'll show you later. Right? I mean, this is... Here, watch this. I will make myself yet more contemptible, and I will be abased in your eyes. But by the female servants of whom you have spoken, by them I shall be held in... Honor. Honor. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child to the day of her death. Now, do you think that marriage survived? No. Say no. Ladies, why are the best masons always men? Because they're experts at building walls. You go confront your husband with some negative criticism... Up goes the wall. The stonewalling. It's an automatic reaction. They get quiet. They pull away. They want to be by themselves. If you go after them, what's wrong? We need to talk about this. They're going to basically tell you, back off. Why? I'm getting away from this because I don't want to lose control. I don't want to overreact. Listen to me now. It's not that like, oh, I don't want to hear you and you don't matter. And so we're going to stop talking right now. And I'm going to show you my back by walking out of the room. That is not it. What is going on is I don't know what's happening. I don't know how to control it. But I'm not going to let it get worse because I love you. I'm not going to make it worse. So I need to pull away and I need to think this out. Right, guys? Isn't that what it is? When I first, Becky and I were first married, we had a huge fight. And Becky went to my mom and she says, you know, whenever we get in a fight, he ends up going for a walk. You know, and then I go after him, like, going, can we talk this out? And he says, no, go home. And he gets mad at me. and makes me go back home. And she goes, what do I do? What do you think my mom said? Leave him alone. Let him walk it off. He'll come back. He'll get his head straight, and then you'll be able to work it out. But if you pester him while he's in that mood, it's only going to get worse. That's how guys are. Guys don't want to hurt their wife. They don't want to make it worse. And a lot of times, they don't understand why they're in trouble. Amen? <laughs> they don't understand why they're being scolded. They don't even have a clue what they've done. You know? And so they're like being chewed out, and they don't even know what they've done yet, and they're trying to listen very closely for what that is. And they're like really confused. They're like, what did I say? What did I not say? What do you mean you wanted me to know? You know, and so there's there's this panic that goes on. And guys, oh my word, they hate to be scolded. The word hate strong. The word scold is very strong, isn't it? I mean, what are you talking about? We're talking about berating a child, right? Remember when you were a kid and you got bawled out by your mom? That's never fun. And so reprimanding your husband is a surefire way to not only annoy him, but to disrespect him. Proverbs 12.4. Ready? <laughs> I hope you're braced. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband. All right. That's good, huh? An excellent wife is the crown of her husband. I mean, royalty. Can't get better than that. Comma. But she who shames him is like rottenness in his bones. Wow, unfortunately, too many well-meaning, loving wives want to help improve those that they love. They want to improve their husband. But when they scold them, they're projecting. The guys aren't seeing their heart. Like the scripture reading earlier, they're not seeing their heart. It's like verbal venom when they're being scolded and disrespected. Now listen, ladies, I totally get 
that, that, that husbands need to be corrected. They do. They need to be confronted. Absolutely. Why do I say that? Because men are boneheads. It's so true. We just don't get it. We don't even know that we don't get it. How dangerous is that? I'll tell you what's more dangerous than ignorance. Stubbornness. Oh, my word. Hey, let's put that combination together. <laughs> Bonehead, stubborn. Put that together, it's the worst mix in the world. Not only are they not getting it, but they're stubbornly refusing to get it, and they don't even know they don't got it. It's a terrible, terrible mixture. And I know the guys get like this. Believe me, I are one. <laughs> and you love them. And you know you can't let them continue to do this and act this way because it's affecting the family, it's affecting your marriage, it's hurting them, it's hurting you. It, it, it may be even hurting God. And you know that, and you know that it has to be talked about. But listen to me. It's, it's your attitude that makes all the difference. If your attitude is aggressive... Bump, 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 there goes the wall. If your attitude is negative, complaining, and criticizing, bump, 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 up go the bricks. So let me, let me talk to some of you mothers. What if your son grew up and married a negative, criticizing wife? How would you feel about that? Would you want your son to grow up to have a, a negative, criticizing, critical wife? No, I don't think anyone here would. Have you ever been guilty of the very thing yourself? So let me talk a little bit about what I think are the most happily married men. This is just more opinion than anything, really, but uh, it, it is based on a lot of conversations and some study and some reading. The most happily married man knows, his, despite his flaws, that his wife still admires him. His wife blocks her complaining and demeaning words and phrases things so that they still honor who he is. She appeals to him without condemning him. She asks questions without interrogation. My wife is a master at this. She is really good at this. She should, she could, and she should, she could come up and say to me, when are you going to finish that project? But she's too loving and too wise to approach me like that because she knows, remember the stubborn part I was talking about? If she came up to me, she says, when are you going to finish that project? I'm like going, well, it just went long now, girl. I mean, you know, that's how I'm thinking. <laughs> I was thinking about doing it next weekend, but you know what? I might get to it this summer. It's just the way that we are, okay? But see, Becca's too smart for that. I mean, 37 years, she's starting to really figure me out. That was facetious. Okay, so... <laughs> Instead, she'll come up and she says um, something like, um, Honey, have you thought much about that project? See, is, everything's different, isn't it, guys? Honey, have you thought about that? Yeah, yeah, actually I have. Now I'm starting to think, oh my word, I've got one right now. <laughs> There's one right just came to my mind. It's, it's so obvious. So my refrigerator died. No, it, it just, just happened. So it was an old fridge. I said, I'm not going to fix it because it's too old to fix. So I'm going to get another one. So I got another one. Really nice. You know, ice in the door and all that. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> but you know what? City of Turlock wants to charge me money to come pick up my broken refrigerator. I'm like, huh? It's got $200 worth of parts in it. Are you kidding me? 
I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll try and fix that refrigerator myself, and then I'll sell it on Craigslist. So I ordered a part from Amazon. It didn't fix it. I even asked somebody else who just fixed their refrigerator, and he told me what he did, and I ordered the same part for mine, and it didn't fix it. Here's the issue. That, that big old gigantic 25 cubic foot box is in my garage. So that when I pull my car in, I've only got like four inches of clearance between everything because of the refrigerator that's inside the garage. And so I thought, well, I'll just take out the ice maker and some of the shelves and put them in storage and put them on eBay and get some money out of that. They still want to charge you to pick up a dead, empty carcass refrigerator. So, Becca goes, have you thought much about that refrigerator lately? <laughs> <laughs> like every time I pull in the garage? <laughs> yeah, I have. So if anybody wants to buy a refrigerator, <laughs> It doesn't cool anymore. I've got it on offer up. I'm only asking $40. There. So, it won't be long. Because of my loving, respectful wife, I'm going to get rid of that thing, even if it costs me. It's all the difference. Happily married men know that a wife not only loves him, but likes him. You'd be surprised at how many couples I have counseled that if I ask the guy, does your wife love you? Yes. Does she like you? No. Not at all. I'll ask her, do you love him? Yes. Do you like him? Not right now. And boy, I mean... Brrr. So... So let's, just, let's go back in time a little bit, okay? Remember that the reason why he decided to propose to you and dedicate himself to you alone for the rest of his life is because you, back then, complimented him. Back then, you laughed at his jokes. Back then, you bragged about him to your family and to her, fa her friends, and, and you expressed to him, in your own way, that he had qualities that you admired. And he loved you for that. He would have never proposed to you if he didn't hear that kind of language come from you. He would have never given you that engagement ring if you were nagging him and complaining to him and unsatisfied no matter what he did. There is no way in the world he'd have gone to Jared's for that ring. <laughs> but back then, remember how it was? He told you you're beautiful and I love being with you and he was super affectionate and, 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 and close and, 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 and you were respectful and it, isn't that amazing? Husband loves your wives, wives respect your husbands. Happily married men have a wife that understands that her man views everything through the lens of respect. Whether it's the workplace or whether it's school or down the street, men will not tolerate being disrespected. It's just absolute zero tolerance. Anybody in the military? Honor is about everything. It's all about honor. Public safety, all about honor. It's all about honor. How many men in California prisons are there because somebody disrespected them? Yeah. How many men have left a disrespectful wife to have an affair with someone else who thought he was charming and funny and... So, just to put this in perspective, it's, it's nearly every single day that Becca tells me she loves me. Nearly every day. But last month, listen to me, Last month, she came up to me, she grabbed my shoulders and squared them in front of hers, and she says, I just want you to know, I am still proud to be your wife. 
and sisters, I remember that for days and days and days. She's been telling me she loves me every single day. But when she looked in my eyes and says, I still respect you, that's what I hung on to. Does that make sense? Guys, say amen. It does. That's, what, that's, how, we're, that's how we're built. A happily married man is married to a woman who protects his honor. She would never criticize him in front of others. She would never ridicule him in front of others. She would never announce his failures in front of anyone else. And when his name is slighted, she's the first to defend him. So in Ephesians 5.33... There is the imperative. However, let each of you love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Last week I talked about how men are commanded by God to love their wife as much as himself. And, and guess what? In here, the language is also clear. It is a command. There is no loophole. It is non-optional. The apostle isn't making a suggestion. He isn't saying, if you do this, it'll probably be okay. He is making an imperative directive. Since a man's primary need is to be respected, then she, he says that she uh, must respect her husband. And here's another thing that's imperative. Wives are compelled to respect their husbands even if their husbands don't love them like they should. Just like last week. A man is to love his wife even if she doesn't show him the respect that he should have. He's still commanded by God to love her, right? Yes. And equally, a woman, a wife, is commanded by God to respect her husband even if he doesn't. You know, it's not the if he does, then I will. It's not that. When he loves me, then I'll respect him. That's not it. God is commanding us to love our wives even if they are not always lovable. And wives are to respect their husbands even when they are not always respectable. And it's a command. And you know why it's a command? Because we probably wouldn't do it without being told by God himself. And what's the blessing for obeying God? What's a blessing when a woman respects her husband, when she withholds the negative criticism and withholds the, the nagging and the complaining and the confrontations and the aggressiveness and the dominations? What happens when a man sees that? What happens is, is that he will joyfully and willingly love his wife deeply. So what happens when a, a person has a kind of faith where they're doing what God wants even when they don't want to? The, the answer is a reward, right? That's what God gives us. I mean, it's easy if we already feel like doing it and God tells us to do it. Okay, that works. But what if God tells us to do something hard and we don't feel like it? And yet we still do it even though what happens? Lives are changed when that happens. Lives are changed. I've seen the Lord repair blown up, burn out marriages. When a couple sees that God is commanding him to love her and her to respect him. And I've seen marriages resurrected from the dead when they did this.